Okay, uh, good morning everyone, let's start. This is a briefing, day four. Couple of notices, first of all, for the dust seats. Ah, oh, sorry. Okay, so this is a briefing, day four, good morning. And now, couple of notices. So. For the dust seats, uh, so what is collected into the lockers, it's, there is one for pilot, one for team captain, one for crew per each pilot. And uh, extras will be available at the terrace or of the infat or, or competition office. And please uh, let those uh, girls from the competition office, let them do them work. First, let them tear the dust seat first into the lockers before you go there, because otherwise they will be really confused at what they already did and what they didn't do. So please take time for them. Um, obviously, some uh, SMS they do not reach everyone, so that's the operator problem. So if there is no uh, foreign operator supporting to our service, then we can't do anything with that. So also is to get the finish free bed. And then uh, Alpha India changed the competition ID, so Alpha India is until now, from now, uh, his competition ID is Alpha Kilo India. And then we have received uh, some more election of memory sticks. We sent them uh, some days ago, but uh, we didn't have enough those. So if you missed a nice election of memory stick, you can have one uh, in the competition office. And then uh, for, the, for the wireless network, so we are working to improve it. So additional wireless space station will be installed today in the camping East, who will have a trackers today. So the idea is that uh, we put that first, all the trackers into club class, then all the trackers to standard class, and then to the 20 meter class. And after that, we start to share them. So after the third competition day, then we share them for the for the top pilots in, in, in each classes. And then uh, for this tricky 
Ah, sir, one more thing before that. So for the outlandings, so we have received a couple of notices from the farmers that uh, uh, that there has been some outlandings, and uh, of course you should always avoid any damages for the harvest and uh, try to conduct always the field owner. Of course, it's not always possible if uh, if the field is far away from houses or so on, and. Uh, you should drive into the field only if you have permission to do it, so always try to get the approval for that. And uh, of course, most of the farmers, they are nice, so no problem with that. And uh, you should behave nicely, and uh, if, you, if you are diplomatic, and you can negotiate even with those not that nice ones. And uh, guns are pretty heavily regulated in Finland, so Typically, there is no problem with those. So you can find these things here in the in the in the airfield area because this is a training area for the for the military. But these are not typically found in the fields. <laughs> and then we go to this tricky weather situation. Please, Jarko. Okay. Thank you, Heikki. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, weather for today, so I need the pointer. Okay, thanks. So this is a significant weather chart, at least for today. There's no frontal systems over southwestern part of Finland, but this uh, quite thick cloudiness will be a problem today. Here is uh, two consecutive uh, satellite images. Rauskala is here, and you can see that. Uh, quite extensive area of uh, high and middle level cloudiness in the satellite uh, imi image and uh, there is uh, breaks in eastern Finland, quite a big break and then another one here in west coast of Finland and uh, with, uh, with the current uh, northerly winds this uh, break will move uh, to south and are expected to be located in few hours here west of Rauskala. Uh, <clears throat> uh, then here is a uh, time series for, uh, for the thermal cl cloud base or thermal hi uh, height of the thermals. And uh, according to this uh, numer numerical weather prediction model, the, uh, the one, one kilometer, 200 meter, 200 uh, thermal height would develop here in the western part and even, even better, one kilometer, 500 meters at this area here, but leaving still a bit lower the thermal height uh, uh, over Rauskala. Another uh, higher thermal height area is developing here in east, east of Rauskala. And during, uh, towards the afternoon, the eastern area is developing better, but uh, this western part is uh, shrinking and still giving Rauskala a bit poorer conditions than uh, in the west or in the east. east. So this is a Jokioinen and Sauding for, for this morning, 3 UTC. Uh, and uh, as you can see, there is very, very strong uh, inversion here at two kilometers and uh, uh, air parcels rising or cumulus convection rising would give a cloud base uh, a bit over one kilometer, one and one, one point five kilometers and, and they would spread out, spread out uh, at that inversion uh, giving quite, quite uh, much cloudiness. And also this spreading out can be seen in this model forecasted uh, sounding over Rauskala, uh, it's very, very moist in very, very thick layer uh, at around uh, 1.5 and 2 kilometers. And uh, the meteogram for Rauskala is telling the same story, quite uh, thick upper layer, uh, high cloudiness and uh, still uh, this uh, stratocumulus cloudiness uh, above uh, 1 kilometer. Well, anyway, some uh, sun is still warming a bit through those clouds and uh, 
the cloud uh, uh, temperature is expected to rise to 14 or 15 uh, Celsius degrees during the day, but uh, uh, the maximum temperature will be quite late uh, in, in the afternoon. And also the dew point should, should go down during the day uh, to the four, four degrees or even, even lower. Okay, thank you, that's it. Okay, thank you, Jarko. So as you see in the thermal maps, uh, the, it seems that this is much better here, but it's anyway really weak, so that's why I, I don't want to send you out here because the outlanding options are here much less than in this western part of the, of, the, of the competition region. So that's why I have set the tasks now in the, in the western. Yeah, it's really weak here as well. So, so and that's why I have set the tasks now here west of us. And uh, they are assigned area tasks 2.5 hours for all the classes. And the club class is uh, going first to south and then a uh, little bit backwards. I tried to set that along the wing, wind direction and then uh, back to Rauskala via this third assigned, assigned area there. And uh, this is for the standard, so standard goes a little bit further to the west. And uh, then for the 20 meter class, I want to send them first a little bit to east and then after that flying here in the, in the western part. But let's see how it goes now, because uh, it's also possible that the, if, the, if it will be much better in, in the east, then we will start the, set the different tasks, of course, and we will share them in the, in the, in the grid. But uh, this is the situation so far. Um, same procedures like yesterday, so launch is 3.0, two parallel runaways and uh, remember the parking areas here as well. And uh, for the relaunch is uh, 08 left uh, available and remember this is only for the, for the tow plane landings, this uh, red indicated area there. And then uh, for the release areas, just a reminder, we shared yesterday this uh, siege for the 20-meter for the, for the class gliders for the, for the release areas. We will announce that what will be used then before the, before the uh, towings. And then uh, finish ring uh, standard procedures, three kilometers and two seven, four meters Q and H, that's the minimum altitude there. And uh, please behave nicely after the finishing and, uh, and uh, concentrate on, on landing procedures. Uh, finish is 08, so it's a uh, direct landing to 08. And uh, please keep in mind that uh, everything here is landable. It's not only the, the tarmac runaways, but the also everything here between is, is landable. So, so you can use entire area. Or if you have a lot of energy or, or altitude, then you do the circuit to one, two left. And uh, please keep in mind that you stop your glider before that indicated red line there. Any questions? Yeah, yeah, keep that in mind because of course if there are lots of gliders coming coming at the same time, you shouldn't do too much curves of course after the landing. So it's better that if you just continue uh, and landing long and stop only here then, so that's the most safest option. Any other questions? Mm, okay. Yeah, that's, that's uh, how, how should you choose to operate. That's in the, according to Annex A, you should do this uh, um, restart of the motor after the, after the launch. Yes, that should be done today. Good reminder. Okay, I have another slide, but uh, before that, there is a uh, one reminder by by our safety guys. Good morning, ladies and gents. A short improvement and information concerning about our new protocol concerning small or major penalties. We want to make it easier for you so that you don't have to go to shop. And we had a quite hard meeting a couple nights ago 
the International Penalty Committee and we make a new Appendix 3 and the small penalties are one bottle of this lager or this English style beer. And how to act if you take the next slide, please. <clears throat> you go to the hangar bar, the bartender has been informed, and you go there and buy a label. And it's five euros, and you bring the label to safety crew. Then we make the checking that you are free. It's taken care of. This system is valid only for small penalty li penalties like parking in the hangar area. But of course the heavy duty system is still valid. You remember the 1000 pages thick book, handicap book. This is now just an annex three there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, have a nice day. Good morning, Gliding World. Welcome back to the Rauskala uh, airfield. It's day four, waiting for, waiting for the gliding weather. We have some hope because uh, we have good on the west, a little bit better on the east, but here over at the Rauskala skies, we have very overcast, dense cloud base. Looks like possible to fly at the end of the afternoon, but before it, we have uh, some chance to talk about background, uh, backgrounds of the aviation. Today I have here a good friend of Finland, Patrick Powells from Belgium. Welcome back again to Rauskala. Thank you. This is your third time as an international office host here. Indeed, it's the third time and it feels like coming home here. It's good to hear. Uh, in, uh, you, in this time you are working here as a steward, helping the organization between the organization and the competitors. You are doing your very important work. Uh, but in the meanwhile, back home, you are also working on the high-level organs of gliding and especially on gliding and avi aviation. Altogether, what, what are your posts you are doing nowadays? Uh, besides the sportive side of gliding, we also have the regulatory side of gliding. And professionally, I'm more involved since the last 20 years in the regulatory side. And we are faced with some extreme changes. For instance, in 2002, the whole aviation community was forced to change to a European system. 
and it started for us in 2008, 2009 for the maintenance and airworthiness. Mm -hmm. Then the next step is now a hot topic, the licensing and the training. That means that before the 8th of April next year, all licenses, all existing licenses and ratings be changed into a European document. Also, the training must be set up according to the new European structures. And it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. And besides that, another hot topic in every country is the airspace. Mm -hmm. Because very often we are really put back in small reservations. Mm -hmm. Or in some areas we get some release, some more possible uh, room for flying on very strict conditions. For instance, installing transponders, uh, becoming per permission to cross areas. So it makes sport more and more difficult. And also the technical requirements of the pilots are increasing and becoming very demanding. Mm. Just the flexible use of the airspace, uh, the process itself, it has made it more easy, easy also for us to use the airspace. But what happens to the size of our airspace? Uh, in the beginning it was uh, an idea that sounds very well, but at this moment, in the smaller European countries, we do not see any profit of that. And uh, in some countries, like in Holland, in Germany, in Belgium, and also in some areas in France, the discussion is still going on. And up to now, we do not see really the flexibility that is promised, or that is the basis of the coming system. So it will be some hard days and hard time to find solutions and to survive for our gliding sport. Mm, yeah, does this big change, for example, in airspace matters, does it happen at the same, ti same time all over the Europe? Uh, n n no, there are also differences. And uh, in some, in some uh, areas uh, they are going faster than in other areas. Uh, in combination with that, with also the frequency trouble. Mm. Uh, the point that we are all forced to change radios because they have to introduce the 8.33 frequency separation. Mm. And also that is a European system, and, uh, but the implementation is also scheduled mm. and all countries have their own implementation scheme. So what are the uh, steps, for example, during this year? Well, what kind of organs are working with these matters? If, if you, we think this time, especially colliding. Uh, on the European scenery, we have two major organizations. On one hand, we have the European Gliding Organization, and uh, it's a member of, uh, organization, and nearly all European gliding federations are assisting that. And then in combination with all other airsports, we have Europe Airsports. That's another member organization. And both organizations are working close together and uh, with one goal to defend our sport so that we can go on like in the past. Nevertheless, we have a lot of changes. Mm -hmm. And then globally, who, who does the work for us? Every organization is sharing a part of the job. And uh, thanks to a large group of volunteers who are working day and night, offering a lot of their spare time, and also the member organizations who are helping and supporting and funding those operations. Because uh, remember, when we gather with European delegates uh, in the offices of IASA, it will take a lot of days, a lot of time, also the cost, the travel cost, accommodation cost, pre meeting preparing, organizing workshops to pr uh, inform and to train our own people, our own members. It's very demanding. Mm, so the EASA is the European Wide uh, Flight Authority, uh, arranging, making these rules, and these volunteer organizations uh, are trying to ma uh, make, make some kind of clarification uh, for this. Uh, yeah. Uh, the EASA, the European Aviation Safety Authority, is the working party on behalf of the European Commission. They, give, they get their instructions from the Commission and they have to translate it into workable documentation and rulemaking. And uh, I'm pretty sure initially they had very nice ideas to start really from scratch with 
a black sheet of paper. But on the road, still they are becoming more and more working in the old-fashioned way of making things more complex than necessary. Mm. And very often, the lower end, the air sports, are put together with the large aviation in the same, in the same uh, group of uh, partners. And uh, that's becoming difficult because mm. air sports is a complete different world. We have the examples, for instance, the maintenance system for a glider is more or less the same as the maintenance system for an airliner and you will see that immediately that does not fit uh, they've been using one size fit all but i'm sorry that does not work for air sports and luckily after so many attempts toward the european commission and the people of iasa the commission has accepted that and they say oh, indeed you are right we have to change but the change that will take some time and they promised to review even the basic regulation, all implementing rules, yeah. but that will take five, six years before we can have any profit of that. So we have to find now solutions to survive the coming five, six years. Mm. This discussion is a little bit concentrated into the Europe. Uh, two days ago, we had the GEM team captain here uh, talking about his national team selection. The reason why this is so European concentrated is that only Germany, they have half of the glider pilots in the whole globe and we other nations and other continents we say the rest of the maybe 30 uh, remaining 30,000 pilots that's why we are a little bit focused into the Europe this time but the problems are common we have the technical changing requirements we have the airspace changes the modern yep. techniques to navigate that's one of the big issue in the in the changes and of course the licenses and this competition we are competing on the flag of the FAR. Uh, you are uh, sharing your knowledge also, also there. Uh, we try to do because inside FAI we have for every air sports a specific group for gliding. Is it the International Gliding Commission? And in that International Gliding Commission, I am a representative of uh, the Belgian National Aero Club. Mm. But due to my experience in the European Gliding Union, I'm tasked to inform also IGC and FAI on European matters. Mm -hmm. So we like to inform each other because the experience we have here now in Europe, we can share it, for instance, with people of Australia and New Zealand because also there are some troubles popping up. Mm -hmm. So good exchange of information is, is uh, fundamental to help each other for the future. Yeah, that is so true. So we will hear this year is uh, going to be a big change also in Finland, especially in space matters. You mentioned the next April, that's the time for the next change in air licensing. But yeah. let's go back to a little bit li lighter issues. Now you have some time to send your uh, greetings in your own language back home. People waiting for you, looking for us. <laughs> that's very nice. So, beste Zweiflik vrienden, Vlaanderen, België, vanuit het eet wat natte Finland. Hopen we dat het weer snel zal omslaan, zodoende dat onze twee knappe piloten nog een paar prachtige vluchten kunnen maken en uiteindelijk onze belangen verdedigen. We hopen het en uiteindelijk de organisatie hier is ontzettend vriendelijk en willing om ons te helpen. En we hebben eigenlijk maar één doel, dat iedereen huiswaarts gaat met een fantastische vliegervaring en een big smile met de beste herinneringen aan Finland. Thank you, Patrick. It was a pleasure for me now, to do it. Now, let's wait. What happens with the Rauskala weather today? Welcome let's back see. tomorrow morning, people. See Thank you. you. Mm.